then <laughs> Jakarta, Indonesia, and another life lesson. Now, Jakarta was an eye opener. Man, I just wanted to get off the ship and walk on something that wasn't moving, moving for an hour. <laughs> Which is, you know, usually what a sailor does. He just wants to go have something to eat and, you know, maybe a beer and walk a little bit. But this was just third world, abject, starvation level poverty. Man, I've never seen anything like this, not even on National Geo. But I end up in this little place called the Radio Bar. And if there's a, if there's any sailors out there that hear this, have been to Jakarta and the Radio Bar, my brother, I want to hear about it. Now, the, the Radio Bar was a, a dirt floor tin shack. I don't know, maybe 20 by 20. The bar itself was just a, a couple of 10-foot planks on cinder block. And there's a half a dozen buckets, you know, scattered around for, you know, people to sit on. Now, when I walk in, there's three guys, probably port workers in the corner on, on buckets, eating a little bowl of noodles. What they're doing is just stare, you know, sound familiar? <laughs> then a tiny skin and bones woman in rags holding a starving infant slowly shuffles in, squats down right next to me and Timidly holds out her hand, touching my leg, begging for a coin. Um, did I mention I'd never been out of Oregon before? But now, I catch the three guys in the corner had set their noodle bowls down and are looking me up and down like a bag of meat. So I'm thinking, yeah, okay, this is familiar. I've been here before. They're gauging me. Wait and see how I handle this to see if I'm a soft target or not. Well, <laughs> my Spider-Man Spidey sense is ringing off the fucking chart. Now, I grew up literally in the back room of my dad's bar, and uh, now 10 bar and bounce for him when I'm home off the ship. So I've been around the block. I'm a big scrappy guy, but I know a bad spot when I'm in one, and I'm in one right now. I am all by myself. Nobody knows where I am, drinking questionable alcohol deep in a port slum in Jakarta. I should not be here. But I'm not your average pigeon, and I'm not letting these guys intimidate and run me out. This ain't going to happen. Not in this fucking lifetime. I'm going to stand right here, have one drink, to say I did, and make my point, and then get my lily white ass back to the ship where it should have stayed to begin with. Holy shit. So I dropped some coins in the woman's hand and uh, turned to make a, a little solid eye contact with all three of them. Give them that little head nod of acknowledgement to let them know I see them and I know what time it is. And I'm also trying to keep an eye on the woman who's still squatting a foot from my legs. All this 70-pound woman has to do is wrap up my knees for two seconds. These guys are on me, and it's over. They just cover up the blood with more dirt, take my watch and money, and I'm never heard from again. Shit. They'll feed my body to the pigs out back, and in two weeks, some other sailor will be enjoying me with mustard on a hot dog bun. And if you don't think this kind of shit happens every day in port slums around the world, then I congratulate you on the sheltered life you've lived. But brother, I am in trouble. So now, I know the woman is the key. The guys behind me aren't going to make a move until she grabs my legs. It's too risky. Hell, every sailor carries a knife, including me, and I'm twice their size. So, real quick, I bend over to pull up my sock and put a pace between me and the woman. So now she can't just reach and grab. She's got to move towards me. And if she twitches, I'm going to smash my knee into the center of her face as I sprint for the door. So now I'm just resting. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm, <laughs> it's like I was there again. So at, at this point, I'm just resting now. I've got my right elbow on the plank with my back to the wall so I can keep an eye on them and her. Yeah. I'm ready. Now this changes the whole dynamic. And as confirmation, I see her look at the guys, look at me, look at the guys, look at me. 
Now, they know that I know, and the mood changes. I am not a soft target. So, right on cue, <laughs> they pick up their bowls, resume eating and talking, probably about me. And that was the sign for the woman to shuffle back outside the door where she was before, a few coins richer, that she'll split with the guys. And I stayed there another ten minutes, enjoying a leisurely hundred-degree beer with adrenaline sweat rolling down my back. But feeling pretty damn proud of myself, to be honest, for spotting this one. That little starving panhandler was a damn good distraction and almost worked. <laughs> But hell, son, I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> now, th this was obviously a team that had done this before. I mean, who knows how many times. Now, I'm sure they'd probably just knock you in the head and take your money. But you could be disappeared just as easily. And it does happen every day. But this actually was good for me. I mean, it put me on point immediately from that day on about where I was, and where I shouldn't be, <laughs> you know, at least by myself anyway. But from here, it was on to uh, Manila, Philippines, uh, back to Singapore and Raffles, and uh, back to Hong Kong, 